Hi everyone, um, my name is Yvette. I'm really excited to be able to do this clinic online with you guys. Thank goodness for technology. Um, it is a bummer that I can't be there in person playing music for you guys and answering questions in person, but you know, if not now, maybe sometime in the future. Basically today I have a couple of questions that you guys prepared for me uh, that I'm gonna go through and answer. And I also prepared two songs that I'm gonna play for you and kind of run through my thought process as to how I compose them. <laughs> Without further ado, I'm gonna go dive into the first song. So this is my guitar. Uh, it's basically the prestige version of the my signature uh, YY10 Slime Green Sparkle guitar that's out currently. Uh, mm. Outfitted with uh, Seymour Duncan 5-2 pickups, the Wilkinson Tremolo system. It's got a maple neck. Uh, I guess if you want to know anything about like the exact specs of my guitar, the information is available online. Uh, I'm running through a Vox AC10. Uh, live, I use the Vox AC30. It just has a bit more headroom. So this is a song um, from my band Covet called Shibuya. Because my bandmates aren't here right now, I'm just gonna play to a track.
for me, a lot of my songs end up just being built out of one riff. Uh, it's usually a riff that I think is like super catchy or maybe uh, I think is, there's something special about it. And then I construct the entire song around that one riff. Um, and for this song, that riff was this one. I was just noodling around and, and that came up um, and I posted it online just thinking hey like here's a here's a cool tappy little thing and people ended up really liking it so I was like oh shoot I should just like make it into a full song I think uh, in a bit I'm going to show do play it really slow and show you exactly how I constructed that because obviously I didn't just sit down and play that like I kind of had a thought process going on with like the root notes and also how I wanted to achieve um, the polyphony going on there. So I'll run you guys through that in a bit. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention also was um, earlier when I said that every song starts with one riff, I don't mean literally start the song with the riff cause you know, I'll write something and I'll listen to it a bunch and then I'll decide, okay, we're in the story. I like to call my songs stories because technically I'm like trying to tell a story with sound, but I'm like, where is this, where in the story does this riff belong? Is it an introduction? Is it like, you know, maybe a climax? Is it the conclusion of the story or is it like a transition? So for me, I thought, even though this is like super catchy, it doesn't deserve to be the intro. Like there definitely needs to be something before it. Um, so yeah, that's just an example of me thinking in terms of a songwriter and, and placing my riff and then once I establish where it goes, that, that allows me to know what things are missing. And, you know, uh, a lot of my melodies I end up singing too. So that's kind of how I decide how to go, how to um, figure out what comes next after the riff and what should come before. I usually like sing it. And then I find that whatever I sing with my voice ends up being the most natural and not forced. So before I teach you the, uh, the that part, I want to dissect it a little bit and help you get into the, the mindset of like how I write something like that. Uh, basically, every one of my riffs, I try to sound as full as possible as one person. So for me, I wanted there to be these three root notes. So I'm kind of doing that with finger picking. Um, and all of, it's like kind of like a, on a piano, having left hand and having right hand. Um, and then in this case, my right hand is doing all the tap melodies. So uh, a lot of people are so used to finger picking down here by the pickups, but I actually finger pick on the neck to make it a little more economic for myself. That way I don't have to jump back and forth. So I'm finger picking on the fretboard. I know it's gonna be, it's gonna feel really weird, but it'll help you be a little smoother and faster, so. I'm muting that with my uh, the right hand, like. That's like a tap slide and a pull off. And then. So yeah, you just put it all together. And then. I just changed the chord a bit. complicated but um uh but it's also a, a combined finger picking tapping thing and then i move to this chord shape Ooh, this one's a little different because you're tapping and sliding with your left hand a harmony are just essentially like combo moves of like finger picking, tapping, a pull off here and there, a mute, and uh, all it takes is to, to learn it is just dissecting it and chunking it into little bits and then you know learning it bit by bit pissing it together until you can play the whole thing smoothly. So as I uh, mentioned earlier with the text overlay, <laughs> uh, my 
I'm playing in DID F sharp AE, capo one two. And the reason I like alternate tunings is because sometimes I feel like in standard, I kind of just play the same shapes over and over again. I get kind of stuck just sounding the same. And alternate tunings just take shapes completely away from my vocabulary and my mindset. And I'm forced to really use my ear to find a melody that I, I actually like. I'm not using convenience to dictate what I write. So another cool moment in this song, at least, in my opinion, and from what people have asked me, uh, is the little like pseudo sweep thing I do with tapping. We do it really fast. It, it does sound like a sweep, and that's just, again, uh, me combining a bunch of different techniques like the rake thing, the finger pick rake thing, which I'm doing on the fretboard because I don't want to have to jump from down here. Everything's up here. Combining that with a... So it's just a little bit of finger, fancy finger work over here. But you know, if you do it slowly and then try to piece it together. It's not that bad. One last thing I want to add is um, if you're trying to get better with, with finger picking and uh, with tapping, two-handed tapping, I would say to not practice with a compressor. Right now I'm running through the Earth Creaker Warden, but um, I usually at home when I'm writing, I just don't use a compressor at all because I feel like it makes you actually have to work to, to play and uh, make everything sound really nice and even and smooth. And then think of it this way, once you're already gliding without you know, uh, any extra help, once you turn on that compressor, it's just gonna really even out your playing and make it sound buttery. So um, yeah, that's my one tip for practicing two-handed tapping. So I also get people asking, why did you name this song Shibuya? Uh, and that kind of goes behind the story of this song. Um, so I, I, it was conceived in my living room and I was just kind of noodling around playing these things. And then when I completed the songs, I realized that it made me feel really hopeful and nostalgic. And it, and it just brought me back to when I was traveling and touring in Japan, walking around in a new city, um, the city was Shibuya. And I was exploring the area, just feeling like very lost, but it wasn't scary. It was very um, uh, uplifting and empowering. And uh, I kind of wanted the song to, to be like, a snapshot, uh, an imprint of, of what I experienced there. So I'm going to shift gears really quick and play you another song. This song is called Parachute and it's off of my band's newest record, Technicolor. Um, and this song is special because it's the first time I actually really sing in the band, which is new. Earlier I mentioned that I like to tell stories with, uh, with sound and uh, tones and textures and dynamics, but in this case I wrote the song and uh, I decided, okay, this really needs vocals, really needs lyrics. My whole rule for when I write is uh, don't rule anything out. I, anything's fair game and do only what serves the music. So for me, again, I was like, okay, it definitely needs a vocal line to carry the melody more. I gave it a whack and here I go. <laughs>
want to speak for my band here, but personally, it's my favorite song to play live. Um, I want to go ahead and switch gears now to answering some of your questions that you left for me. Uh, question one, can you tell your guitar history or a story? Um, my relationship to music and guitar in general is really weird. Um, I'm really grateful to be able to, you know, do what I do for a career right now. But uh, in a nutshell, I grew up learning classical piano and classical violin. I played in two orchestras. And for me, when I was younger, uh, I always associated music with a lot of pressure and a lot of stress because I had to enter competitions and if I didn't win, you know, my, my parents got upset or I felt like I was a failure. And in a nutshell, I got very sick from all the pressure. And I uh, actually went to the hospital for an eating disorder. And um, during that time, you know, my heart was, was not working right. So I had to just be in bed all the time. And I took up acoustic guitar and I started writing songs just to help me feel better. But then I, saw, I soon realized that uh, teaching myself guitar kind of made me fall back in love with music and I, I started to get really excited to write songs and express my feelings through music and um, my self-worth shifted from maybe like how I look and, and what people think of me to what I can do with my hands and what I can make the music I can make, the art that I can make. So um, thanks to guitar, I fell back in love with music and and here I am today. Uh, guitar is really sacred to me because it's something that I did for myself. I taught myself entirely and um, I had one guitar lesson but it was like a flamenco lesson and I, I didn't practice and <laughs> that's a that's another story but <laughs> yeah I, I basically taught myself and I don't know like for me it's it's an outlet for my emotions. It's still is the one thing I can depend on to uplift me when I'm going through a rough time, when I'm having depression. So I don't know, that's my guitar history. So the second question here is, which guitarist or musician influenced your musical ideas the most? Um, my answer to that would be, I actually didn't really listen to a lot of guitar music. Like I grew up exclusively on classical music. And then I think I started listening to some bands like Minus the Bear and stuff when I was, um, in middle school, I think that was like when I was 15. And uh, I always admired composers and songwriters. Uh, I didn't really look up to like virtuosic guitar, but instead I looked up to people who could tell a really compelling story through music, through through the, their songwriting, through their lyrics. Uh, I think starting out, I really liked a lot of bands like uh, American Football, Toe, uh, Six Gallery, even like the more punk side of emo, like Midwest emo stuff, like Algernon Cadwallader. Um, yeah, the list goes on and on. Uh, Enemies, I really like that band as well. Uh, so I guess I listen to a lot of bands. <laughs> and in terms of singer-songwriters, I really loved Sufjan Stevens, Joanna Newsome. Um, and there's a composer I really look up to, Olafur Arnolds and uh, Nils Fromm. Um, I really like his ability to just tell a really emotional story through even just a few notes. He does a lot of movie soundtrack stuff as well. So he's always someone who, I think he also had a similar background to me. So I always looked up to him as a, a composer. And I guess as a guitarist now, I, of course, I'm trying to learn all this technique, but at the end of the day, um, I still want to put songwriting and, um, conveying an emotion uh, at the forefront. I want that to be my emphasis. So the next question is, why did I, why did I choose to play the guitar? <laughs> well, uh, oh, and also, did you ever consider playing the bass instead? Um, as I mentioned earlier, I started on piano and violin, and I was just super into the classical world, and I chose guitar because I used to sneak out uh, to go to shows, go see bands, go to rock shows. And I always thought they looked so cool on stage and I love the energy of a show. I love how everyone's so excited and people make new friends and everyone there uh, is bonded together by their love for the band that they're watching. There's a real sense of community, you know? So um, I always grew up watching guitarists and I thought maybe I can do that. I, defin I definitely didn't think I'd be able to do it as a living, so I feel very grateful.
but um, yeah, I guess that's why I chose guitar. And it's really special because it's something that I taught myself. And uh, it kind of helped me, as I mentioned earlier, fall back in love with music in general. Um, and now I love piano, I love violin. Like. I love bass. I just got a bass. I got an Ibanez Talman bass. <laughs> um, and I'm really looking forward to being able to compose with it as well. Basically, if I had enough time on the planet, I would want to learn every instrument. But right now I'm kind of focused on a uh, guitar. So the next question is, is there anything that you do every day as a musician, like a routine or a practice? Um, I will be the first to say that I don't practice guitar enough, and that is shame on me. I should practice more guitar. However, that being said, every day I will try to sit down and I will just noodle. I'll like improvise with myself, even if it sounds bad. But basically my goal is to try to write something new. And even if nothing happens, I don't get too disappointed because the more you try, the more likelihood there is that you'll come up with something that you like. And I find also that um, having gear, having pedals around um, can ins help inspire new sounds as well. So sometimes, you know, if I'm in a creative rut, I'll sit down and I'll pull out like a delay pedal or something or an uh, interesting reverb and I'll try to write with that sound in mind and sometimes something really different comes out. Uh, so that's my daily routine. And I find that everything I, I try to write, um, I can't play yet. I, I sing everything. All my melodies come from my voice first. So then I translate it to the fretboard. And oftentimes I end up practicing guitar a lot because I have to learn the thing that I hear in my head and then I end up getting better at guitar. So it's kind of like all encompassing. Uh, and then if I don't feel like playing guitar, sometimes I'll sit down at the piano and I'll do the same thing. So maybe like I don't play guitar every day, but I, I at least will try to write something every day. The next question I kind of already covered, uh, what do you think about when writing a song? And uh, I mentioned that, you know, I like to sing all my melodies. So oftentimes when I'm writing, I'm like humming things. And then once I get my first riff going, I'm like, oh, this reminds me of like a crystal cave with like a lot of reflections. And then I'll start coming up with an image or a story in my mind. And then I try to have the music match what I'm seeing in my head. And I know that sounds really abstract and crazy, but um, my background is in visual arts. Like I went to arts, fine art school. <laughs> so for me, everything goes back to the visuals and how I can convey them. Um, so yeah, I guess for me, the biggest compliment when someone hears my music um, is when they say, oh, that song reminded me of this feeling or this story. And then having it match exactly what I wanted the song to convey. I think for me, that's like the biggest success as a songwriter and a guitarist. <laughs> the last question is what goals do you have as a songwriter? I think I really covered this comprehensively <laughs> uh, at risk of sounding like a broken record. Uh, I guess I feel like a successful songwriter when I'm able to tell the story I hear in my head and have people understand it um, and uh, have people feel the same emotions from the music as the emotions I felt when I was writing it. Uh, I know for Parachute, the last song I played, I wrote that when I was really depressed and going through a really rough time. And I wanted it to feel uplifting and hopeful. So um, if someone were to come up to me and say, that song made me feel really hopeful, I would be elated. <laughs> um, and that being said, as a guitarist, I guess I feel successful when I can have a really fun time doing what I'm doing and have that excitement and passion and love for my craft translate to someone else. And if at least one other person can pick up the guitar because they see how much fun I'm having, then to me, that's success. <laughs> um, anyways, that concludes the question portion. Uh, I wanted to thank Ivaness for having me do this. This has been really fun uh, doing a cyber clinic, the first of probably many. Uh, and yeah, um, thank you everyone for tuning in and watching. Take care, be healthy and safe.